Hey, what's going on, guys? Welcome back. Droid Life Show today, uh, episode 175. I didn't change the date up there. Look at that. I screwed up something in our second ever of this new fancy episode. <laughs> I just might, just might not show you. Anyway, uh, welcome. Uh, <laughs> I'm struggling to try to like get rid of that. Hey there. Now you can't even tell. Um, so episode 175, and it's actually Friday, June 8th, not whatever that did say for a second there on the screen. So it is yeah. June eighth, right? Friday, June eighth. Uh, uh, so, yeah. anyways, uh, welcome back. We got it. We got a big show. Actually, a really big show. There's a whole bunch of stuff going on. Pixel three XL stuff everywhere at the moment, and uh, and then we got a whole bunch of new phones. <laughs> well, Galaxy Note nine. Uh, we got some CAD renders, which typically end up being um, pretty accurate. So we want to talk about those. Uh, Tim is bored by them already. Uh, but we got like June <laughs> security patch. We got a new Android P beta. Uh, our one plus six and G seven reviews have actually been posted since the last show. We can just say any quick final words there. I know we've talked um, at length about them, um, but yeah, Motorola has a Z three play. Now there's a new BlackBerry phone. There's an Asus gaming phone. Like it was actually kind of a big week in terms of just general news. So um, anyways, thanks again for joining us. We will have trivia at the end of the show and uh, the folks at toast who make fine wood covers for basically everything right from, phones to laptops to i'm sure they cover xboxes, more xboxes to playstations to chromebooks to they'll toast the heck out of anything from what and, i know and it's real wood like this is real wood this is real stuff into the factory in portland haven't you Yes, yeah, so they are based in Portland, and it was a couple of years ago where I went to visit Toast, and it was awesome. I wrote up the whole process that they do in their facility, and it, and it smells lovely in there, right? Because it's real wood it's that they're wood. toasting, they're burning, and I don't know if anyone's ever worked with like a wood burner before, but man, it smells so good. Yeah, so Toast, um, the website's toastmade.com if you want to go check any of their stuff out, but they are they're going to hook our winners up with toast made skin i don't know if you call them skins toast made covers whatever um yeah, skins covers yeah so big shout out to toast for uh for that so um let's get started though that was okay so trivial happening at the end of the show and we'll talk you through that and uh it's obviously a lot of fun but in terms of topics pixel 3 xl is kind of dominated uh the week which t- is typically the case when we get um new google leaks of any sort so it's actually a pretty long week. So it start well, I, I guess we could even go back to last week. So I think it was Bloomberg had a report that said Verizon has an exclusive on the Pixel 3, Pixel 3 XL again. And they talked a little bit about there being a notch in the Pixel 3 XL. And I think they maybe even said only single cameras, not dual cameras. So, so they gave us some stuff a week ago. Um, and when we say exclusive to Verizon, we're talking just carrier exclusive. Obviously, Google will sell these unlocked. So let's not get too crazy there. Um, so, so that was kind of like one of the first leaks to start it and then over the weekend um we t- we heard about a possible mid-range pixel phone under code name bonito which is basically like a tuna right i mean i eat sushi that's bonito so uh mid mid range <laughs> pixel running a snapdragon 710 but may not be out until next year at some point so and kind of push that one aside. It may not be a Pixel 3. It could be something else. We're not really sure. Um, and then we noticed that at um, AOSP, a mention of Blue Line popped up. And Blue Line is one of those Pixel 3 code names we kind of gave out way back in October of last year. Crosshatch, Blue Line, Albacore were the three we were told. Uh, Crosshatch has popped up multiple times now. Blue Line, this is the first time for that. We still have not seen Albacore. Um, Actually, Albacore and Benito are actually really similar fish. Uh, so there could be a chance that Albacore is now Benito. I, I'm not really sure. That's just me speculating. Mm. Um, anyway, so Blue Line showed up. So we kind of got some sort of confirmation there that, yeah, that was that, that was actually correct. Um, and then uh, randomly at XDA, some dude just goes, hey, here, here's the Pixel 3 XL. This is an early prototype. He blurred out some <laughs> stuff, but uh, he basically showed us the phone already, which is kind of crazy. Yeah, and then the internet just went on to kill itself. Basically, yeah. <laughs> it was uh, it was epic. It was uh, yeah. so like when Samsung phones leak or whatever, and, and we talk about what what's going on there, or an LG phone leaks, or you know, like it's not that big a deal when a Google phone leaks. <laughs> That like, yeah, the internet cannot contain itself, which is weird because Google apparently only sells like a million phones or something. I mean, I know they sell more than that, but 
it, and so yeah, there was this massive freak out. Number one, it was the Pixel 2 XL um, on the on the screen on the screen of it. It showed uh, four gig RAM, which seems a little low for 2018. Uh, 128 gig storage, um, Snapdragon 845, and that crosshatch code name we mentioned was also on there. Um, this was basically listed as a version 1.0, so this is probably pretty early prototype, perhaps. Uh, it's but so we we kind of learned a lot. So four gig RAM, hopefully that maybe changes. Uh, at least 128 gig storage model. Uh, although this is a prototype that may mean nothing. Uh, Snapdragon 845, which is what we assumed, and then crosshatch. So it looks like a Pixel 2 XL from last year, the one the one we all the one we all have right now. It, it looks like that, um, except then the display has a notched cutout up top um, with a dual camera set up up there, and then has a chin on the bottom. There's stereo speakers. There's no headphone jack. Finger perina on the back. There's that two-tone sort of or two-textured look. Um, yeah, it looks pretty similar, I would say, right, to last year's Pixel 2 XL, except for the, uh, the notch situation. Uh, anyway, so these first pictures popped up. And then later that evening, the guy came back and sent more pictures to XDA. Um, I don't know that he that we necessarily learned anything else from the new pictures other than like the buttons are on the same spots and that the SIM tray is moved to the bottom. Like right now, Hot. SIM tray is over here on this left side. And in these this new phone, it'll be on the bottom. And there's no headphone jack or anything like that. No headphone jack. No headphone jack again. Uh, there's a new sensor in between the camera and the flash. I don't know what it is. <laughs> Still a single camera, not a dual camera, which I don't really care because that's what we got last year from Google, and it's, they still have probably the best camera ever uh, in a smartphone. Uh, what else? Uh, people have collectively freaked out, mostly over the notch, right? <clears throat> yeah, the notch. That's uh, it's a pretty uh, pain point, apparently, for a lot of people. Everybody, I guess. Everyone is, uh, they're not happy. Okay, so to further that, um, phone designer, Twitter user who's been creating some really nice looking renders of phones, and he started basically around with uh, Pixel 2 or Pixel 3 XL a couple of weeks ago based off some other leaks. Uh, he created renders based off of this prototype, and uh, I think they look great. And I shared that opinion, and uh, whoo, people are not happy with me. Well, you're a shill. <laughs> Apparently, I'm just a Pixel fanboy shit, which I, I'm not going to necessarily deny. I do like Google's phones more than other. I did write the Pixel 2 XL is my iPhone. Is my iPhone. I mean, exactly. I did write that. Um, so, I, I, you know, if you want to call me a Pixel fanboy, I'm not going to be like destroyed by that. Um, that said, it has a freaking notch. Like we knew, we knew this was coming, right? We absolutely knew this was coming. Whether you wanted to believe it or not, it was a thing. Um, you know, our belief, and this is all adding up to our belief being reality, um, that the XL will have a notch and the smaller one, the Pixel 3, will not have a notch. So for all those crying about the notch, maybe just hold off and get the regular Pixel 3 until we see that, you know, like... I understand people want the bigger displays and all that, but if you truly like the bigger displays, then wouldn't you like the notch? I, I don't get it, because technically you're getting a little bit bigger of a display. Yes, it's got a notch, but damn, every phone's got a notch now besides like Samsung phones, right? which is ridiculous, right? We always used to think Samsung was the copycat yeah. king, Yeah. but look at them. They are forging their own path, so props to Samsung. However, <laughs> we've got a notch. You're just going to have to deal with it, and I don't really know what all the hubbub is about. I know originally you were not a fan of the notch now you're sort of like eh, i don't care originally i was a fan of the notch i was like oh yeah bring bring it on and now i really just don't care so i think we're at both at the same point we started on opposite ends of the spectrum now we've met in the middle where we just don't care we're, we're over it we're used to it because we've all used phones now one plus six has a notch uh, lg g7 thin q has a notch so i've just gotten used to it no big deal and it's not the end of the world and if you don't like this phone, you know you don't have to buy it. So you can just buy another phone. That's true, though. But if you're like the type that that's this is the phone you want, like, and you and you see a notch and you just can't stand that. Go back. I want to go back though. I've never said I don't. I don't. I think the notch is the ugliest thing on the planet. This is the. But you thing, knocked it whole... enough to where people were like, okay, okay he doesn't. So like that's me. not my fault that people don't understand the point I was making over and <laughs> over and over again because the point was. 
that the, that it looked like Android manufacturers were copying Apple. That was the that was the whole point. That was the whole beef. Like I don't know how that just went. Whoa. And yes, I've been trashing every phone for doing the notch thing because, well, it looks like everyone was copying Apple. Like that's the point. I even said, I don't know, I wish I had like audio handy. I should like click it and, and you can listen to me say on DL shows like, I don't actually mind the look of the iPhone 10. I, I don't. Mm. I think it's unique. I don't really have ever said like the iPhone 10 is the ugliest thing ever. That notch has got to go. That just sucks. I've never said that. Well, when the LG G7 first got shown, you were like, oh, I mean, so or someone, you know, was blatantly copying Apple. And so, and then you just, yeah, that was you the know, Asus the snark. Zen Phone 5. Oh, yeah, yeah. So there was a lot of snark involved in what you were writing. So people, I just, just assume they take it as, okay, Kellen doesn't like the notch. So, you know, forgive them if they're a little confused on your stance because people are you're confused. not. Yes, Do I need to like write a piece that says like, hey, guys, let's go back in history. I never said I thought the notch was the ugliest thing <laughs> no. ever. I just said, please stop copying Apple. Like, like I said, we don't want an iPhone. I didn't say we don't ever want a notch in anything or because it's the ugliest thing ever on the planet Earth. Anyway, well, no, no Android OEM is really offering anything on the scale of Apple in terms of kind of like the functionality of the notch or why the the notch is there, right? Like, right. I remember when the the notch came out, everyone was like, "Oh, you know, turn the lights off and get a special camera. You can see the lasers that the iPhone X is blowing out mm -hmm. across your face, and, all, and it, it looked cool and it does something." Whereas these Android phones, all they have is just that front-facing camera there with the same old crappy Android face recognition software that's been around since ICS, and it's just not all that great. So I understand. Although this phone does have two cameras, I wonder if I think it, I think right. like maybe it's XDA that's posted this, but they noticed something like a commit AOSP, AOSP that said like iris scanning or they i swear somebody recently and I, I wish i knew who it was said something like they found something in either maybe the android the newest android p beta or something that said like iris scanning might be built in or maybe google actually has talked about it so maybe this is like an iris scan maybe they are going to do something a little bit i know that's not like apple's facial recognition iris scanning is a little bit different but i feel like those two cameras are going to mean something special you would but, hope so or maybe just yeah. some depth effect selfies i mean that's the best we could hope for, I guess. Death yeah. effect selfies. Uh, so, yeah, I, th I think the phone looks fine. Look, I, here's the, here's another thing. I like the look of this phone. And so uh, if if you give me slimmer bezel up top, that uh, maybe might mean a, a, a stupid notch. I, I, I don't understand why it's saying like this looks good is, is a bad thing. I think. The render looks pretty good, at least from what we saw this morning in the pictures. Like, I'm yeah. kind of, I'm kind of digging the look of the phone. I mean, you know, I guess I'm just so over the notch thing. I, I don't even think about it. I'm thinking about it right now because I flashed the Android P beta onto the OnePlus Six, and there's so many bugs, man. That um, so one of the one of the issues is that when you have the device unlocked, the clock in the left upper corner is stuck to the corner it's not actually sitting inside of the notch it's like literally stuck to the corner and it's extremely annoying uh to look at anyway i can talk about that later but yeah so notches that's it yeah, it's the only time i care it's like when there's like a bug yeah i i mean notches are they are what they are yeah i also want to uh, just quickly point out like I'm the one who complained that Samsung's Note 9 looks boring. Kellen is the one who's like talking about <laughs> pixels and all that. Like yeah, we have opposing have, opinions on things. <laughs> people have pointed that out, right? Like you guys said, well, yeah, Tim and I can have different opinions on stuff. Tim said he thinks the Note looks Note 9 looks boring, which we'll talk about. And I'm the one that said I think we should stop copying Apple. Two right. different things, but you know, hypocritical or whatever we're doing, Tim. There's so much rage. There's so much rage. The only rage I have is like, yeah. don't mischaracterize what I said. <laughs> sure. No, I, I that's appreciate only, that's that. the only thing that, that gets me a little fired up is, uh, yeah, I didn't say what you guys are saying. So, uh, I'm not a fan of people like say calling you a shill or anything like that. I, mean, that's I love pixel phones. No, that's ridiculous though. I mean, it's such a low blow really. I mean that, you know, in our profession, quotes um <laughs> to call someone a shill is ridiculous so you know google's not out here paying kellen to to hate every other phone but love the notch on the this picture you know, it's just it's just not the way it is so there's, 
this is true. We do not get paid anything from Google. Um, Haters got hate. Uh, I will say though, um, Pixel Three. We're pretty sure it has a glass backside. Um, when the when the first prototype um, pictures were posted. <laughs> It looks like it to me. And then when that guy posted more pictures last night, he said in a forum post, like it's not, he said it's either, he said he's pretty sure it's glass. He said it's not plastic and it's not metal. So we're pretty sure it has a glass backside. Now that I think sucks. Um, there's a chance. And I think XDA actually discovered this today that there's a chance it, it will have wireless charging. Um, and so I get that you put glass on has wireless charging like every other damn phone, except the one plus six who went glass and didn't go wireless charging. Um, I don't like wireless charging, not something I really care that much about. Uh, what I do care is that glass sucks. It scratches, it cracks, it's fragile, and it just makes you uneasy and almost forces you to use a case, which I'm not happy about. Like this phone, like this thing is like, I know it's metal under there, but it feels like plastic. And like, I put this thing down on anything. Like it's, I don't, you know, I'm not worried about it. If, if the Pixel 3 XL is all glass, that kind of sucks. I mean, it's like this phone, which we haven't talked about at all. Like the U12, like this is all gl- actually, I think this is plastic. I'm not going to lie. I think this is plastic, mm. but, uh, do a test. I, don't, I don't know for sure. And I don't really know how to test that, but that, that might Scratch be another, it. another topic. It has a couple of scuffs though, but just say, like, sorry, I dropped it. Hey. Uh, but the glass, yeah, but the glass thing like that, that's, that's kind of depressing just cause it's just not durable, but I get it feels good in hand and it looks pretty. And if it gives people wireless charging, they might feel better. Yeah. <sighs> what else? Pixel three XL. Uh, we don't know anything about the pixel three other than no, like, other than the pixel three might be the one to get. Yeah. If you hate notches, but I think you kind of said earlier, like it looks like a pixel two XL from last year, just slightly smaller. Um, I don't know. That might be the one to get this year. I mean, it'd be interesting, right? Everyone goes with those XLs, like the larger pixels, the Pixel 6P and all that. But this year might be the small guy. Yeah, that's true. And it'll probably be decent size. Like we call it a small guy. It'll probably have like a 5.3 inch display or something, which is actually a pretty good size. And it has dual cameras and slimmer bezels. And people wanting wireless charging, I just don't get it. I mean, we we recently wrote up about how wireless charging is overrated, and that is an opinion Kellen and I both share, actually. <laughs> yeah, we and, do. Like, we're not alone I, in that either. I think no, I don't of, think so. A lot of people like, actually we got, think that. Yeah, we got wireless chargers, but they just sit there, and it's just so much easier just to plug it in with fast charging. Like it's not, it's not like your phone is plugged in, chained to the wall for that long. Anyway, it's like chained for like thirty minutes. Then yeah, you're we got done. fast charging now. Exactly. Uh, have you ever tried to use a phone sitting on a wireless charger? Even those ones that like stand up, it's not that enjoyable. Usually, you just have to pick up your damn phone anyway. And then when you do that, it stops charging. Wireless charging thing, I don't. I get if you have one like by your bed. <laughs> you know, you just slap it on there. Um, next to next to your bed at night it's on a wireless charger whatever i mean i can also just plug my phone in at night so So scott says use it to understand it if you don't get it you're doing it wrong okay mr (laughs) tim cook whoever said that crap at apple man like if if you don't get it you're using it wrong like no i'm not like you just place it there and (laughs) it charges your phone there's not many like different use and ways to use it Whatever, I, love fa- I, I just love fast charging. I think it's one of the greatest <laughs> technology inventions ever. You just plug your phone. It used to take so long to charge a phone. Now you just plug the thing in. 15 minutes, you got eight hours of use, according to spec sheets. Turbo charging is where it's at. Yeah, that's right. All right. Uh, I don't really know what else to talk about with the Pixel 3 XL. Yeah, I think it looks fine. But I'm also a uh, huge Pixel 2 XL fan. It looks like a Pixel 2 XL with the uh, current trend of the, of the minute, the notch. Damn. I'm over the notch thing. Because we have to be. Look, it's still annoying, but like we've had at least I think a couple of manufacturers, both LG and OnePlus, said, "Look, we have a notch because this is the next step towards an all-screen display that has no notch." And yeah, it's kind of a bump in the road along the way. And Apple did this version of it. Like Essential did it first, obviously, right? We know Essential did the little little widow's peak. And then Apple did this version and everyone's looks more like Apple's version. Um, but like, this is just what we get. Like 2018, if you're, if you're going to be mad at the notch with every single phone that comes out, then you're just going to hate every phone in 2018. And like, that's kind of a grim outlook on the world of smartphones in 2018. Like, unless you buy a Note 9, like, I guess it won't have a notch probably, but every other phone is going to have a notch. So 
if you don't like it, it's totally fine. I, I like, like I said, I'm not that big of a fan of the trend of the notch, but like this is 2018. If you're excited about tech, like what, what are you going to do? I guess you could you just it. spend the rest of the year just complaining and complaining and complaining. I, I think I'm just done. I did a lot of complaining. I did a lot of notch complaining. I think I'm burnt out on it. Yeah, I mean, this is the internet, right? So it's not like that's ever going to stop the complaining. But, uh, I, you know, I feel like if people kind of like wireless charging, right? If people just give it a chance, you know, don't <laughs> knock it till you try it. Um, you can always return it. You know, I'm sure the Pixel 3 XL is going to be legit just because I love the Pixel 2 XL. People people don't get it, right? Like they say, well, how can you not knock the Pixel 3 XL but knock the LG G7? The G7 is a crap phone like compared <laughs> to probably what the Pixel will offer. And that's just like all there is to it. Like if it's a good phone, it's a good phone. If it's a bad phone, it's a bad phone. I will yeah. not let the notch dictate whether I think a phone is good or bad. You know what I'm saying? comes down to much more than that it comes down to the camera software experience etc yeah it does God, so, people so running the chatter listing out some options like the sony xperia xt2 like mm-mm, mm-mm. v35 i mean it's like last what? year's phone with <laughs> a couple of specs from this year I, I, it, you, moto phone so like the moto z3 play which we're going to talk about a little bit later it doesn't have a notch this htc phone it doesn't have a notch, but I'm not going to tell one person to buy this thing. So I, I, I don't know. On, on uh, just real quick heads up for Burtzer, we do have a Sony Xperia XZ2 on the way just for you, buddy. So <laughs> don't even worry. We will have Finally. plenty of Sony coverage coming. <laughs> Finally. Three months Six later. Six months later. <laughs> when was that phone announced? Was that MWC? I don't know. I think so. That was February. It had I to think be it February. was actually MWC. What? It's June? Sony's just now. Good lord. All right, anyway, Better late than never. Are we done with the Pixel 3 XL for now? There's not much else. To for talk now, about. until next week when we're probably talking about it again and just redoing. We've talked about <laughs> when it. When I've written six opinion pieces on <laughs> why this notch is the best notch ever. Exactly. Maybe I should just fully dive in, just, just to really fire it up and just write like the Pixel 2 XL is not, or 3 XL is not just different. It's different. Exactly. All right, let's uh, let's uh, fire some more people up. Tim uh, is a <laughs> Galaxy Note Nine <laughs> hater. Uh, so we got That's CAD strong. renders uh, from OnLeaks, and they partnered with Ninety One Mobiles, and uh, yeah, they showed CAD renders of what we believe the uh, Galaxy Nine and Gal- Galaxy Note Nine will look like. And uh, uh, Tim was uh, Tim was fired up there. I, before you get in there, though. Um, I believe it was Bloomberg reported last week that uh, the Galaxy Note 9 could arrive on August 9th, um, which is a few weeks earlier. The Note 8 was late August. They're usually like late August or like the week before Apple announces whenever they're going to announce. Um, so a couple weeks early, they might have pushed it up a little bit. And uh, yeah, do you want to uh, you want to talk about this? I'm going to give you your own camera. You want to talk about the Note 9? Okay. <laughs> yeah. So the Galaxy Note 9, you know, it looks like a Galaxy Note 8. And, uh, you know, no no huge surprise there. The Galaxy S9 looks a lot like the Galaxy S8. So why one in it? You know, so we've got the 10th anniversary coming up for the Samsung phones, the Galaxy S10 or the Galaxy X, whatever they're going to call it. And I think that's the one people should be excited for. You know, this phone, besides a change with the... uh, kind of how they're laying out the fingerprint reader and the dual camera setup on the back. You know, this phone looks a lot like a Note 8. And and because on leaks and 91 mobiles came out last year and they were super almost like spot on with their Note 8 CAD renders, you know, we just have to assume that what we're seeing here could be it. And while it's not a bad looking phone, you know, all glass, all metal, like we've had this for like four years now with uh, starting back from the Galaxy S6 where it's like all glass and all metal. Yeah. Dude, like I'm kind of, I'm kind of bored, and that's just all I said. You know, I didn't say the phone was gonna be Look bad. We or... have to like defend everything we've said. It's been I one know. of those weeks where we're just like, guys, just chill. We're, it's not that. It's not that. It's not yeah. that big a deal. Yeah, like it's just my my opinion, man, and and I'm totally entitled to that. And I would hope, as Americans, <laughs> y'all would fight to the death for my opinion. Anyway, <laughs> so we've got 
3.5 millimeter headphone jack on the bottom. You've got your external speaker, USB C, Bigsby button, volume rocker, power button. button. It's a damn, it's a damn Note 8, but they're calling it the Note 9. And it does have it's a going rectangular to have every ish fingerprint reader. Does have a according to these renders, yes, rectangular. A lot, you know, it's minor things like that could change. It also shows that the camera module has like a little bump to it on the back. I mm. doubt that. It's probably going to be flush, just like it is on the Note Eight. Um, the, the CAD renders last year had sort of a, a bump too. That's probably not going to happen. So, uh, S Pen, of course. Uh, I mean, it's gonna be. It's gonna have everything under the sun. That's with these Note phones. They just pack so much into there that. If you want every feature that Android offers, it's probably going to be there and then some. I mean, Samsung has been years ahead with regard to, to to some certain features that Google brings in natively way down the road. So this phone could have some cool stuff that Android Oreo or P doesn't even have. So who knows, man? I mean, if you love Notes, you're going to love this phone. Right. You know, but but is it going to be worth the upgrade over the Note 8? And that's what we're going to find out. And, and I sort of doubt it. Just because, where do you go from the Note Eight? You, you can only go down. I feel like I mean I just don't even know what they would improve because the Note Eight is a great. I would say they'll improve the cameras. They'll probably be slightly better. I mean the cameras are so good anyway, right? They'll they'll be slightly better. It'll have whatever. So Bloomberg said that there's going to be there's possibly going to be a new Qualcomm processor in there. I don't know what the hell that would be. Um, Qualcomm did announce Snapdragon 850 in the last week, but it's built for windows pcs that they're making it's not it's basically an 845 that's been slightly tweaked so unless they change that up and they're going to throw an 850 in there um but again that would be weird like the pixel 3 xl will come out in october and we just saw evidence that it's running 845 so i don't i don't know what bloomberg's talking about there but who knows maybe there is some special new processor that that qualcomm will have or samsung will have for this um I feel like by new processor, they just mean the newest processor. I I think they said like new as in like maybe not the A4. They didn't specify that it was something different than the A45, but I don't know. It's kind of, it's just one of those weird notes they threw in there. Uh, Look, I'm with you. Like, I think this phone looks kind of boring. I'm ready for, it's been, like you said, it's been four. Going back to the Galaxy S6, that's when we got this design language from Samsung. And sure, it's, it's evolved and there's curved backs now. It's gotten better. They they look a lot nicer. I mean, the Galaxy S9 is not an ugly phone. It's just, mm-hmm. it feels and looks a lot like the S8, which felt and looks a lot like the S7. And then the, actually the S6 was one of the better ones, I thought, because it's a little more squared off and not so curvy. But uh, the S9 the Plus is, the S9 Plus is just like a kind of a little bit smaller Note 8, basically. I mean, this phone's yeah. got everything under the sun, too, just minus an S Pen. So I just don't know exactly. We have this weird thing going on where Samsung needs to figure out what it wants to do next year. Next year, it needs to offer just one phone. Uh, well, technically two in the year. It needs to offer one Galaxy S and one Galaxy Note. And they both need to be insanely special and different. And that's the only way I see it going. Because right now, who's going to buy a Galaxy S9 and not get the S9 Plus? But if you got the S9 Plus, there's there's no reason to uh, upgrade to a Note. So... I wish we could just get don't know what uh, Samsung's doing. like a breakout of the numbers of S9 to S9 Plus sales, like the difference. Because I'm with you. I think I would imagine the S9 Plus is the one that they sell the most of. Um, I would hope so. And I, I'd just be curious if if somebody could ever break those numbers out for us just to, to show us. I, I do like choices, though. I like it when there's a small and a big, although the difference in them is not really it's not really that much. And you do get, mm-hmm. a, you know, an extra camera and more RAM in the S9 Plus. But so, yeah, then the Note 9, it could be here. I mean, we're talking two months now. If it's August 9th, that's only two months from here. They would announce it. It would ship probably within three weeks from that. So you're looking like before Labor Day, we might have a Note 9 in-house, which is kind of crazy to think. Oh, yeah. And uh, yeah, we'll be looking forward to 2019's year for Samsung. I, I, like, I, I don't want to like totally discount the Note 9 right now, but I do want something new. And Samsung is a big enough company. When they came out with the S6, I just remember being blown away by how premium it felt in hand. And, and even though, again, I 
don't like glass, like it feels nice in hand. That's why everyone calls it premium. But like that phone kind of changed a lot of stuff. Like they just come off a couple of years where everyone ripped on them for all their plasticness. And then the S6 and since then they've been making this really nice hardware and remember like forever Samsung wasn't a hardware company we just we used to laugh at them we used to be like this is the ugly remember there was like the band-aid phone there was some other glossy cheap plastics and then they changed and started making some of the most premium and I think they've elevated everyone else's design game which is awesome so I am excited to see what they do next year I'm sure the Note 9 will be a great phone, but I'm excited to see what Samsung does next year because I think it's time that they probably do something else. I mean, they can't release an S10. First of all, 10 is a pretty big, significant like lead or like number in the series, so you should celebrate it with something fresh and new. So it should be exciting. Absolutely. 10-year anniversary, man. Poor I mean, Note can 9. you imagine 10 years of Galaxy oh, yeah, S and Galaxy TouchWiz S. and Grace UI and Samsung experience? and Oh, dude. Big things. Big Huge. things. All right. Uh, in terms of just Android news this week, we got two separate updates. We got the June security patch. So if you're running uh, any of the Pixels or Pixel C or Nexus 5X or 6P, you do have a June security patch and you should be able to just grab it right away. Um, it doesn't really fix much, although they do say it fixes Bluetooth performance. I'm telling you, every month Google goes, yeah, this update addresses Bluetooth performance. And then every month after that, somebody like creates an issue tracker thread that says like Bluetooth still broken. <laughs> so I don't know. that's one of those things like Google can't ever seem to fix is Bluetooth. Um, so they fixed that some Wi-Fi stuff. Uh, so they did fix some other stuff other than just issue. Um, security patch uh then two days later so on wednesday we got android p developer preview 3 which is beta 2 speaking of confusing um android p developer preview 3 but it's only beta 2 so you can grab this right now also if you're signed up for the beta program you should have already gotten it you can flash files if you want to um like we've got it up and running i've got it running on this you probably have it running on yours too right your pixel 2 yeah. xl so it uh there's not a lot of changes from um preview two beta one to preview three beta two um, but we've listed out some of those things um nothing major like the navigation gesture stuff is works the same they've just tweaked the ui a little bit and they re-added a clear all button which is very nice of google to do um that's kind of it everything else is like minor because we're getting towards that like the next two releases will be release candidates and so they'll be stable basically ready for you to to flash them on your phone as we get towards stable release on uh, probably in you know mid August or whatever. Um, we do know that it's Android nine now. They're not calling it nine point they're just calling it Android nine, which is like there's something about that that's driving me nuts. I'm so used to it being eight dot oh nine dot oh, it's just nine. <laughs> Um, so the app drawer is no longer transparent. I mean, it's like such tiny little things. Um, I am seeing the uh. I always forget the name of the widget. The main widget that comes on Pixels now, it's called... Uh, What's happening? At a glance. At, at a glance. glance, okay. Yeah, so What's at a glance happening? is now powering my always-on display. Is it doing it for yours yet on the Preview 3 where you get the weather and all? Your, okay, so this nah. has a, been a kind of a weird rollout, but um, I'm getting at a glance on my always-on display, so I have the weather there, and then if I have upcoming calendar items, they show up on my always-on display, which is kind of cool. Tough to call that a preview three feature since you aren't seeing it. You're on <laughs> I know this is BS. Yeah, they changed the uh, color profile picker preview picture to a little hummingbird with some crazy colors to just show you what's going on. They changed some UI layouts. I think they fixed the massive LTE icon from preview two. That's kind of it. There's not there's not much else. It's a minor guy, and like the next update will probably be similar. It's not going to change a lot. This, this, this is, is it, man. Get. Yeah, I this mean, is about what we get. Yeah, as soon as they released the the first beta dev preview two, I was like, okay, here here's Android P, this is it. <laughs> I know it's kind of. Yeah. I really appreciate these beta programs because I think it's cool that we get to test out software early. But yeah, then when it goes stable and it drops, um, every once in a while you'll see like a review of like Android nine point like when that happens in August, and we always go. What do you mean? Like we've been playing with this for like six months. It's just weird how that works. Like we just get so numb to the fact that we've been playing with it forever. And then of course, from August when it drops till like April of the next year, when Samsung pushes it to their phones, we have to talk about it again. It's the weirdest thing. It's just kind of Android. Yeah. Cause like by the time all these phones start getting updated, like what happened with Oreo, right? 
we got Oreo in August and we were like, cool, we've been playing with it for like four months, testing it for Google. And now we got on our Pixel phones and it's stable. And then we just wait like months and then it like shows up again on new phones. It's one of those bad things about Android. I know we everyone's like talked about this way, way too much, but it's just so weird. Like there's this gap, right? And then there's like LG's like, well, here's Oreo. And we're like, well, yeah, but it's not like new. Ah, <sighs> Android. All right. Um, Oh, so it talked a little bit about this week about uh, Samsung completely dropping the ball with uh, Galaxy S9, S9 Plus updates. So this was kind of a weird story that we did. Um, somebody, uh, one of our readers pointed out to us on like, when did I write this? June 6th, Wednesday. On like Tuesday night, they just said like, hey, look, just so you know, unlocked S9s aren't receiving updates. And uh, of course, that's what we own is the unlocked version of S9. We kind of went yeah, you're right. Like Tim checked his phone. Mine's getting repaired right now. So I don't even have it, but Tim checked his phone. He goes, yeah, I'm still running the February security patch. And it's like, and we're like, <laughs> Oh, we didn't even realize. So I'm writing up this article on like how Samsung's failing to update the unlocked S nines. And I write a sentence that says like, they've been, they've been updating the carrier ones pretty regularly. And then I was like, have they though? So I went back and looked and they haven't pushed an update since like March since the mm. phone launched. So Samsung, for whatever reason, with the Galaxy S9, might be on a quarterly release schedule, which is which is kind of bad. Like they have this dedicated portal to security updates, and uh, it says like these are the phones that get a monthly, and then there's like a footnote, right? And the footnote says, but our carrier partners may decide to release them quarterly, so they kind of leave open the possibility. The really weird thing is like S7, S8, Note 8. They've been getting monthly updates for as long as they've existed. And they still are. Like this year, like the S7, S8, they're getting updates every single month. So I don't know why Samsung all of a sudden with the S9 is like, yeah, we're just not going to do this anymore. (laughs) And they started pushing, of course, an update like the morning I wrote that post. Like Verizon and Sprint both got one. But that was the first one they'd had in three months since launch. It's uh, it's not a good look for Samsung at all. Like you're the you know one of the biggest or the biggest electronics maker on the planet, and you sell more smartphones than anyone. And your flagship phone, you can't even give it security patches. Like, are we really supposed to think you're gonna ever get better at updating with big updates? It's kind of embarrassing. It's, it's frustrating. <laughs> kind of embarrassing. It's frustrating as a as a user. I would be pretty upset, but. You know, I'm fortunate enough to have a few different phones, and the Pixel 2 XL is always updated timely. <laughs> so is the Essential phone, so is the OnePlus phone, any, almost any yeah. OnePlus phone at this point. Uh, yeah, so Galaxy S9, and you know, I, I don't know what they're doing, but it sure seems like they've uh, maybe switched to a quarterly schedule. That's just not a good look when your older phones are still getting the month. I mean, like the Galaxy S8 is, I'm pretty sure, is running May's security patch already and uh or, and has been and uh the uh, galaxy s9 was still in february when i wrote that <laughs> that's just not okay samsung not, not okay um all right so one plus six review uh so like i said our one plus six and g7 reviews have dropped since we did our last show we've spent a lot of time talking about these so i'll make it quick uh one plus six shocker it has a notch and i don't hate it <laughs> oh weird but i'm pixel <laughs> Pixel fanboy. Uh, <laughs> OnePlus 6 design was one of those things I didn't really rip it for other than, you know, the glass on the back because they put glass on the back and didn't put wireless charging in, which just seems stupid. Um, so I, I wasn't really, I'm not a fan of the glass back, especially not the mirror version. If, like, if you're going to buy one, I think you should buy the, the Midnight Black because it has at least that matte look to it. Uh, look, overall, OnePlus 6, it was pretty much exactly what I expected. The software is about as good as it gets. Um, like you can even run Android P right now, like Tim is, although he says he probably shouldn't. Uh, <laughs> but they're getting better with software updates. The performance-wise, OnePlus phones have always been some of the best. Um, I just like their approach to software. It's very much like Motorola's. Um, again, the design of the phone's totally fine. Uh, again, I don't really like the glass, but whatever. Specs, you can't top the specs really outside of there's no wireless charging. Um, the display, it's 1080p. It's AMOLED though, which is what I prefer. Totally looks fine. I had no problems. It was it, There was some issues with brightness outside. Uh, battery life was really good. Uh, obviously, the price is 
I've been vocal about this too. Here, here I go, being a hypocrite again. Tim, I've been vocal about how OnePlus keeps raising prices and they keep saying the component prices are going up. Still, even though that kind of sucks, their phones are 300 cheaper than the Pixel 2 XL. I mean, the OnePlus 6 has mo- has newer specs than the Pixel 2 XL. It's 300 bucks cheaper. So you really can't beat the price. It does suck that it's not on Verizon or it doesn't work on Verizon. No true um, water resistance. Oh yeah, no true water resistance. They won't even give it... Uh, I, I seriously think they've explained it as they put some foam around a couple of pieces and they're like, we don't really know what to call this though. Yeah. So no true water resistance. Um, the camera is pretty good. It's not great. It's okay. yeah. Um, yeah. Tim's done a, done a big uh, camera comparison post of one plus six G seven and pixel two XL. You should look at if you want to compare, you know, that, cause it takes like a 2017 phone and compares to two of the newest guys on the block. It's, it's a good comparison. You should check that out. Um, yeah. I thought the camera was fine. I like you, I had autofocus issues. Um, it, it doesn't really do a good job focusing in any sort of short distance, macro distance. Um, other than that, it's okay. But anytime you're shooting, which is not, good because the, you know they're pushing a portrait mode and things like that so if you're pushing a portrait mode you should probably lock down that focus um yeah i i think my final thoughts are the one plus six is a phone you should probably buy like if you wanted to buy it you should probably just buy it. it's a good phone it's a good phone price is right if you're on at t t mobile i don't know why you wouldn't unless you need the best camera on the planet and really hate glass otherwise i would totally buy one it's a it's a really dope phone. I wish I had sort of the darker version, like the kind of the textured version yeah, or whatever, because yeah, this I'm gloss is pretty it's pretty rough. Um, I've been using I just I put a case on it just because like I, I'm too scared now. Uh, so over you're the course of, of my of pro case these days, it's weird. I am pro case. Well, when we're talking all this glass and stuff, <laughs> know, and like right? you and I both had like a run where we were breaking every phone we had and so i was like you know what i'm just gonna stop and use a case and so i really like the one plus six yeah i think that it could use like a camera software update or something like that Mm -hmm. to maybe help with the autofocus they got something funky going on the camera was actually real good when it was in focus uh it was very color accurate which is something that the pixel can't necessarily say because it just it up there's so much contrast in those photos and it's hdr's pretty darn heavy so other than that the software is amazing so long as you don't flash android p uh beta <laughs> one or two or whatever the hell it is um <laughs> it's not yeah, even just beta. Bright. i think it's just a preview it's like yeah it's just like the preview yeah. yeah i screwed up i'm waiting for the update now <laughs> anyway uh <laughs> because reverting back uh, so the software is great. They add, you know, a lot of those like kind of just custom tweaks on top of what feels like a stock Android experience. And I I absolutely love that. And I think that's what more companies need to do. Uh, I recently talked to someone at Samsung. And I said, hey, you know what you guys should do is just cut it all and just add some like certain things. And, you know, they'll never listen to that. They'll never but <laughs> listen to that. I know it would be nice, though. Um, LG, they'll never they'll never get rid of those skins. I know. I was going to ask you, is it normal? Like, so say the, the do not disturb feature oh for the one plus, did it not have a schedule? Like you no. could not set a, uh-huh. okay. That was bugging the hell out of me. However, thanks to the Android P beta, I now have a schedule error for the do not disturb <laughs> mode. So that they was, are, that's been I, a plus. I believe they're going to add it. I, it's been one of those things that hasn't really been in one plus phones much. Cause they want you to just use that alert slider. Right. They want you to just slide that to whatever do not disturb settings you need. Um, so I think they said in a Q&A session for the OnePlus 6 they're going to add it because everyone did like you. They were like, what the hell? Why are you? Why can't I not schedule Do Not Disturb? That's I thought that was so thing. weird. Yeah. yeah. All You're right. Well, alone. good to know. Yeah. I'm not crazy. Yeah. <laughs> Other than that, solid device, especially for that starting price, 529 yeah? Yeah, 529 then 579 then 629 if you want all the storage. Oh, yeah, the white one dropped this week, too. Was that this week oh, or was yeah. that last week? I can't remember. That was this week. I think it was Monday. this week. Monday. Yeah, that Monday? sounds about right. It has rose yeah. gold, so I wouldn't really consider it. I wouldn't. Uh, rose gold well, was like a, a couple thing, of like years four ago. years ago. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No. We would have been all over that. <laughs> if, if the white one had a silver trim on it, I probably would have ordered one. Because it was like when we saw the first pictures of, I think it was Pete Lau holding one when he was hanging out with that Indian actor. I'm sorry, a guy, I don't know your name. Um, those early pictures were kind of leaked what the back of the phone looked like. I mean, purposely, I shouldn't say leaked. Uh, yeah, Pete Lau was only a white one and it looked silver in that picture. And I was super excited. And then when they announced it with rose gold, it was just immediate disappointment. 
Womp womp. Yeah. Womp womp. All right, you have any final thoughts on the G7 quickly? No. <laughs> Not really. <laughs> I mean, you talked about, I think on the last show, you basically said, like, look, I, I don't like this phone. I can't ready to be done with it. Yeah. So the G7 Think or Thin Q or just G7? How many phones do you have on your desk right now? I'm just curious. Like, you pulled up an S9 earlier, <laughs> and then you had a OnePlus, I, you had a Pixel <laughs> G7. Like, I guess I, I got the four, but. I got five because I got the essential, the S9, the G7, <laughs> the essential the phone. Here's the essential yeah. phone. Um, well, because when we're talking about them, it's good to have them in front of me so I can really get yeah. my mind straight. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so let me, yeah, and it helps to hold it. And then I'm instantly flash back into like, ah, G7. Uh, the software is just so hard to use. It's really hard to get used to. Hardware, really enjoyed it. It's actually um, a nice looking phone. Notch it is a all, good looking people. phone. Yeah. yeah, notch and all. Like, you know, I, I think it's good. That, you know, the camera, unfortunately, <laughs> not Grace. Uh, I did a, you know, and, and LG put so much emphasis on their cameras too, as Kellen cracks a beer so rudely. Uh, <laughs> I don't think the stream could hear that. Too. <laughs> Sorry, not, I heard not, it pretty not, good. Yeah. I, didn't oh, look, I didn't mute it to you. I muted it to them. Now they know. Uh, no, sorry. Just a LaCroix. Don't freak out, everybody. <laughs> Uh, so the dual cameras, they put so much emphasis on these dual cameras yet when I did my, what did I do? I did my camera comparison and boy, it just didn't, uh, did not add up. You know, this thing's got the dual cameras, the wall as the pixel two XL single camera, it's still kicking the hell out of all these dual camera setup phones on the market. I just don't get it. Why can no one do that good? I just like um, the I just like the wide angle lens on it. I think that's Yes, cool. people love the wide angle lens and it and it works just as it has for the past what two years now on LG yeah, phones. So it's been a little while. Yeah. It's been a little while. Um it's other than, than that, you know, it's like a five megapixel depth sensor garbage camera like yes, Motorola's doing and some other people. You're absolutely right. I feel as if you know, there are a lot of the great um, kind of power user stuff that you can do with the camera, you know, in, in their pro mode, not only for shooting photos, stills, but video mm -hmm. as well. There's yeah. a lot of great tweaks. You can do that the same yeah. with the LG V30 and all that. So they do they do add a lot of great stuff. Yeah. It's just when I'm when I was doing a camera comparison, I just pull the phone out and I take a picture. And yeah. when it's the slowest phone to focus, the slowest phone to actually close the shutter after I tap the button there's like these things just add up over time and you're like, okay, damn, that was like a really frustrating experience. Other than that, so, solid phone. If you don't mind the, all the software stuff hidden in there and all that, you know, I, we, we did tips and tricks. We did first 10 things. I did a whole review on it. So if you want more detailed analysis, of the LG G7 thin Q feel free to read my review. Cause I'm done talking about it officially. <laughs> Yo. We're kind of in this like hold. I guess, I guess I shouldn't say we're in a holding pattern because I do have this U12. I've yeah, had this no U12 for pattern. like a week and I haven't talked about it at all on the site. Uh, that is kind of a preview of what I think about the phone. Have I talked about this at all? No, I don't know. No. I think I got it like after we did the last show, maybe. It's not on our show notes to talk about. Should what? I talk about the U12 for a second? Yeah, people want to know about it. Do they? Should I? <laughs> Should I go solo cam? Oh, solo cam this. Uh, U12 Plus. Uh, yeah, crack a beer. Uh, you want me to mute you? Yeah. Uh, U12 Plus. Uh, I haven't talked about this much, uh, but I, I wanted to like it. And uh, there's just some little things that are very, very frustrating about it. Um, when I initially like used it during a briefing, I thought the touch sensitive or pressure sensitive buttons were kind of a cool thing. They might be the worst idea um, in recent memory for a smartphone. They just don't work. They're frustrating. They click weirdly. Um, the volume just like you can't adjust it up or down very easily. Like sometimes I can't tell if the volume is actually going up or down. Um, there's some stutters here and there that I wasn't expecting from an HTC phone. The software just looks dated like their HTC sense game. And again, <clears throat> when I had my briefing, I can't do this solo thing. It's weird. When I had my, when I had my briefing, um, this is the like second year in a row. I said, what version of sense is this running? Is it like a new version? And for the second time they said, we don't really call it sense. Like it's just, it's just like our our software that just works with the like I don't even know how they explain it not being and like can you look on the spec sheet it says Android 8.0 with HTC Sense like it says it right on there and so I always ask them like did you do anything new with Sense and they always kind of correct me and go we don't 
We don't really call it sense. And I just go, just shut up. Yes, you do. It's right <laughs> here. Lying. It's called <laughs> sense. So uh, it looks a little dated. You know, it's still got like the vertical scrolling paginated one swipe at a time after like things like, and I know I can put a launcher on here and that will change some of the stuff. But like we've talked about forever, when Tim and I review a phone, we review it as the manufacturer gives it to us because this is, they think it's the best this way, right? This is their vision. So um, the phone, like the camera's pretty good. Um, I need to do full deep testing on the camera. So far the camera seems pretty good. Most of it's just like, well, battery life's actually not, not good. So that's kind of been frustrating. Most nights I kind of just throw it back on my desk at like 8 p.m. and let it charge and grab my Pixel and use that for the rest of the night because this thing has like 12% battery left. So um, it's just... It's just something about like the little things like picking up your phone and hitting the power button and your phone doing some squeezy crap. Like I don't, I don't want it to do that. And I know I could turn all that off, but again, HTC is selling me on the squeezy stuff. And speaking of that, it's edge sense two, which is their improved, supposedly improved edge sense. I think it's a step backwards. It's way too sensitive. There's times when I'm just holding the phone and you can see it making the, like you're squeezing me animation across the screen. And I'm like, I'm just reading Twitter. <laughs> Why are you doing that? So it seems way, and I've adjusted the sensitivity up and down. Um, there's just uh, like the screen colors. It's an LCD and I feel like they tried to make it an AMOLED. So it's like the colors of like this weird artificial like coloring. And I don't, as far as I know, they don't give you any color adjustments. Like you can't change any of the color settings. It's just kind of like what they give you. Yeah. Oh, you can do sRGB or DCI-P3. I guess I can go sRGB. We'll try that. We'll try that for a while. Now it just looks brown. I, I don't know. It's just, it's it's also 800 bucks. So that's kind of turning me off some. Um, it does look cool on the back, like see-through. You can see that on camera. That's actually kind of cool. In hand, it actually feels nice. It's not too wide. It's not too tall. It's just uh, the squeezy stuff and the software has been a bit frustrating. And, and it, maybe even more so the battery life. Just has not been good, which I thought it would be. Cause I think last year I wrote with the U 11, it just needed a slightly bigger battery. And it would have been one of those like Kings of battery life phones or this phone just, and I've switched it between Verizon and T-Mobile and both not good. I don't know. I, I feel bad. Cause initially when I got it in hand, I was like, this phone could be really cool. And then it just hasn't, it's been frustrating. I had to take a couple days off it too. And just go back to the pixel too. Cause I was just like, Sorry, HTC, this is not the one. Although it does have always on display, which OnePlus doesn't have. Anyway. All right, should we move on from there? I know you probably don't have many thoughts about the HTC U12 Plus. Well, I know that 2018 is the year of HTC. <laughs> I know. Oh, man. I read a lot of takes. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm excited for HTC's 2018. That was it. On January 15th. Yeah. I was solid. I mean, it was like I just coming wanna... off the hype of the U11 Plus, I think it was, and how disappointed I was that we didn't get one. Because I thought that U11 was a pretty good phone. Uh, yeah, it was coming off that hype, and then it just, this is what we got. This is probably what I deserve. Yeah, he says, uh, HTC has slow, slowly caught up and in many ways is doing a bunch of things to smartphones that are underrated, yet pretty damn important to the overall smartphone experience. I would still agree with that I'm statement. looking forward to what you, we've got in store for 2018. <laughs> I would still agree oh, with that. They, they, do audio, sure. they do audio almost better than anyone. I know they don't have a headphone jack, but they've always got some sort of DAC, and they use all of Qualcomm's like special audio codecs and this stuff. I know they include their USB-C sound earbuds, but they do like, you know, they do boom sound. Like their speakers are still good. Like they do sound almost better than outside of LG. They're right there. And like in, when you're talking about, um, you talked about LG's camera stuff. Um, they're really good with that. Like they have that like special like zoom in um, audio recording, like while you're filming and stuff, they've done all sorts of stuff. So they do some really good stuff, but uh, you got to nail the basics. Like, the power button, which yeah, they, I agree. they can't seem to do. Yeah. The first, the, the top rated comment on that post said, you know, can't wait to see what HTC brings. I love their designs, performance, update scheduling. Yeah. Well, maybe, you know, but then you said five months ago, I feel like every time I write one of these things, the opposite happens. <laughs> Did let's I hope say that, that. Yeah. Let's hope that doesn't happen in 2018. <laughs> <laughs> it did. It, it certainly did. No, and they also didn't include a USB-C um, dongle 
headphone dongle in the box. No which dongle. Is, which is kind of frustrating. Well, the problem too with that is HTC does this really proprietary thing with their USB-C port where like nothing really works outside of their own stuff. They're really bad. Mm-hmm. Like they give you Usonic earbuds with the phone. They don't work in any other phone. There's like a chip inside that needs to register with an HTC phone. It's really bad. That's a bummer. All right, we'll move on. I'll review the phone shortly, folks. Don't worry. There might not be any videos about this. <laughs> Hooray. Uh, let's see. So quickly, today we spotted a new LG Wear OS watch at the FCC. This is the second in about a month. This one is the LG W319 or something model number. Um, the last one was the 315. So maybe that means like last, was it last year we got those two watches? Yeah, the G, no, not the G watch the watch style and the watch sport. Maybe they're going to do something similar to that again. Both were Wi-Fi only watches though. Uh, I don't know if they have GPS. I didn't notice the GPS testing, Um, but no cellular connectivity. There's Wi-Fi, but they're definitely Wear OS watches. So they must be coming soon too because they posted them at their LG's like open source site where they post firmware. Like it's all like these two devices are already listed there. So they've got to be coming really soon. Uh, Let's see. Amazon, well, Amazon released the Fire TV Cube this week, which is like a little cube box that is Fire TV, but it also controls your receiver, TV, sound bars, whatever. Looks kind of cool. I wish uh, Google would do that. I mean, they kind of did with that JBL sound bar, but whatever. I wish they would make their own box. Um, Google Assistant and Alexa possibly coming to Xbox. Did you see that? Do you care about that? I do care about that uh, Google Assistant for sure. I mean, that's great. Although I will say Cortana, whenever Cortana pops up when I'm like trying to play Fortnite, oh, she'll yeah. pop up at the worst possible time. Like Cortana, go away. And like, <laughs> it must be buried so deep in the settings because I've looked and I can't find a way to disable her. Oh, I hate her guts. <laughs> well, maybe you'll just be able to kill it by like activating Google Assistant or something. Because yeah, I'm great. with you on that. It's pretty bad. Uh, okay, so there's just some quick bits, but that's exciting because you might be able to control your Xbox by voice, like turn on Xbox, watch this, open this game, maybe something like that. That'd be sick. That'd be or sick. like if it, if you know, the Xbox could be turned into a hub, like hey, you know, lights, camera, action type of thing. That would so. be sweet too. Yeah. Oh, that's true. Yeah. Like while you're playing in the middle of a game, pull up Google Assistant and say, yeah, dim the lights a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, that could be sweet. I didn't even think about it hey, that Google, way. Fire up my Roku. I'm about to. Stomp some noobs. Let's go. The Roku. That's <laughs> awesome. Uh, all right. So essential this week. Elgato. That's what I meant. Oh, Sorry, so, yeah, Roku. I, I don't like, know why I said Roku. I was like, El Gato. You had a Roku. Yeah. <laughs> I don't uh, know. Uh, so essential announces week uh, a bunch of audio stuff. Um, they now support is MQ MQA audio, which means something. Audio files know what that means. I I just I, I don't. Um, but they also. It, in addition to that, announced their next uh, mod or adapter. Um, the first one really since the 360 camera they made. And it's an aud- it's called the Audio Adapter HD. And it's made of titanium, just like the phone. Um, it has a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack on top. It has a DAC. Um, it does hardware MQA rendering. Um, it uses an audio file grade amp. I mean, it's kind of got all the audio stuff you would want. That's cool. Well, they didn't announce pricing. They just said it's coming this summer. I'd imagine it's probably not going to be that cheap. Um, and while that's cool, I don't, I don't get why. Like, the, we, we, we don't think they're making a new phone, right? We're pretty sure there's no essential phone, too. I know that hasn't been 100% confirmed, but Andy Rubin was kind of like, yeah, we cancel stuff all the time, put our resources where it matters. So... By the time this thing launches, the essential phone will be a year old. Like, you... you you're just going to keep selling the regular central phone and make mods for it a year into it. Does that seem weird? Like, does that mean maybe that a new phone is coming or maybe, but I think they need to stop selling the original essential phone. Like that phone is rude. Uh, to put that phone out. Like, you know, like we don't, I leaf, don't leaf recommend bros back. Sorry. Uh, that's right. I don't hear him. Um, I don't recommend that phone to anyone just because the camera is just like so bad. Like everything else is yeah. cool. You know, software updates are kind of making it better and all that, but they can't fix the camera. Uh, so no. or stop the display, selling. the touch latency or, in the display. They can't fix that either. So exactly. So I say they just, they, they kill it. 
And I just find it weird that they created a new mod. And I know they said this mod was coming, but if you're getting out of the phone business, why are you still investing in phone accessories for a phone that's a year old that, you know, was a flop and you don't have any, ch- any plans to replace it in the near future. It's, I just think it's weird. Like, because cool this thing was for, probably in development for like super long yeah. now and it has you, been, know, yeah. it, you know so it's just something that was in the pipeline for so long they said you know what it, we'd be too much of a loss if we just don't sell it so just release it sell It'll it just make like a hundred of them or something who i mean however many they need i guess <laughs> I like don't know. It's there's only like twenty thousand essential phones in the wild if that because people found out how terrible they were and <laughs> Put them back in the box and sent them back. Those bargain bin prices, and then yeah, just ran away. And that, and it's like so upsetting to me. It's like been one of the saddest stories of last year, just because the essential phone is like one of the greatest looking devices of all time. It feels absolutely amazing. And then just to have the experience be so bad was like a dagger to the heart. Because mm. I love that phone, but I hate that phone. It's crazy. It's a weird relationship. Mm. Yeah, I mean, it has a notch. And, about it. it has a notch, and I think it's one of the best looking phones ever. Weird. Uh, I don't even call it a notch. It's like it's got a little dip. Weird. Just a little dip. Just for the I game. Mean, I think I've called it like the best hardware, best looking phone like ever made, basically. It has a notch. It is, dude. God, I'm a hypocrite, right? I, you're shill. <laughs> Such a shill. Hypocrite shill. Yeah. <laughs> uh,. <laughs> So uh, in terms of new phones, we got a whole bunch this week. I mentioned this earlier. Moto Z3 Play, uh, Asus ROG phone. <laughs> yeah, is it ROG or Rogue? I, I always said Rogue in my mind, just Rogue. I always say ROG, but I have no idea. And then there's a new BlackBerry phone. Uh, we'll try to bust through these quickly to get to trivia. So Moto Z3 Play, it was announced um, unlocked for 500 bucks, And that includes a battery Moto Mod in the box, which... It's kind of cool. 500 bucks isn't super cheap when you compare it to the OnePlus 6. The specs are <clears throat> semi mid range ish. You do have a six inch full HD display. They've shrunken bezels, but Snapdragon 636, uh, 3000 milliampere battery. The camera, I don't know that I believe that it'll be that good. It is kind of a mid tier Moto phone. Uh, runs Oreo, no Verizon, no ATT, and again, 500 bucks. Did I say it's coming to Sprint and US Cellular? Because it is. You just it's, did. Just did. That's about all there is to say about it. It looks nice for a Moto Z phone because it has, you know, less bezel. Uh, oh, it has a fingerprint reader on the side, which is kind of unique. Um, and if you're into the Moto Mod thing, like, I'm sure it's fine. But, uh, yeah, it's a Moto Z3 play. Um, BlackBerry Key 2. You want to uh, talk about the BlackBerry Key 2 for a second? Oh, God, no. <laughs> yeah. Um, so last <laughs> year, BlackBerry had the Key 1. This is the BlackBerry Key 2. We will launch later this month for $649. Uh, in terms of last year and this year, it has a dual camera this year, uh, two 12 megapixel sensors, and it also has an improved physical keyboard, whatever that means. Um, apparently, it has something called, what was it, Speed Key? It's got something. I mean, I wrote up the whole darn thing. Uh, I think it was, yeah, Speed Key. So. Yeah. On, you know, on these keyboards, you can swipe on them, gesture them, kind of create shortcuts to applications. So no matter where you are on the phone, you can open up apps all just by pressing and sliding across the keyboard. I did not like the key one. I have a feeling that I'm not going to get a key to this year from BlackBerry. I don't know if they really like me anymore because I just I dogged on the key one so hard. Did you hard. actually use the key one? Oh yeah, you reviewed yeah, the key one. I reviewed I the damn thing. I did a video on it. I think. God, it was brutal. Anyway, so for this year, we're looking at a uh, Snapdragon six hundred and sixty processor, six gigs of RAM, sixteen by sixteen twenty by ten eighty four point five inch display. That's a three by two aspect ratio for those counting. Uh, 3,500 milliamp hour battery, you know, and plenty of preloaded BlackBerry suite applications like Password Keeper, Hub, Tasks, Notes. I, there's about 15 of them in total. So, uh, BlackBerry Key 2 coming later this month, $650, $100 more than last year's Key 1 with a Snapdragon 660 processor. I'm not saying anything because Leaf Blower guy's back. Leaf Blower. He's just going um, off too. That's about it. You know, so if you're down with physical keyboards, um, grab it, man. You know, like I could see why people 
are attracted to these devices they gravitate towards them it's sort of like a nostalgia thing you know with people liking these old kind of nokia looking phones too it's yeah. like the, they play on this nostalgia it's not yeah. great not for good. android right i mean I you want nostalgic about old tech that wasn't that great <laughs> You want the big, you want the displays. I mean, these these virtual keyboards are fine, people. Like they're better you know, than don't. physical keyboards. I agree. Being able to just to swipe and stuff, like yeah. come on, guys. Don't I, I do don't it. miss BlackBerry keyboards. I had like two or three Blackberries. I don't. I don't miss them at all. I don't know. I don't know why we're still pushing these things. I get it. I think there's there's people that kind of like he said. It's like this nostalgic thing. They're like, oh, I remember when keyboards were great, BBM. The times were good then. I this one, I just I just, I just thought we moved beyond that. You know, I mean, we might as yeah, well go back to like 480p displays while we're at it too. I just I <laughs> why know. not take a step we have back. a we have a um, very nice guy Juan Bagnell in our chat. Hate this guy. He says he was the key one was one of his faves oh, easily no. one of the best communicators i've ever used he said the uh the battery life was great when he was at ces like dude come on <laughs> that's funny stop being uh stop being 60 you know just uh all that stuff i don't even anyway. think old people like blackberries like it's like tech journalists like us are the ones are the only people i ever see talking about blackberries if they still want a blackberry old people have iphones and galaxy s4s like that's what old people use now they have these screens and they're like this is great they don't want to tap tap on a physical keyboard they need big screens they're blind and I, you know, I, I don't think I have like uh, massive like thumbs or anything like that. I had a really hard time typing on the keyboard when I was using it. Like I thought maybe I could just get used to it, but I just couldn't get used to it. However, different strokes for different folks. So if if he likes it, if anyone likes the key one, you'll love the key too. I I assume the only people I, did I saw talking about the BlackBerry Key Two yesterday were tech journalists going this sucks this looks great no one else cares I, i've never seen one in the wild ever and you're not going to see this one in the wild either it's 650 no i won't 650 i mean there's probably a deal on the galaxy s9 right now for 650 you're gonna buy a blackberry key 2 over a galaxy s9 never never i hope not <laughs> who's gonna do that not me not anyone else. I mean. All right, let's talk about the ROG phone. I've had enough of BlackBerry. Oh, the ROG phone, apparently. We're, we've been corrected multiple times. Well, I get that it's Republic of Gamers. I know what it stands for, but it's for short. They just say ROG. Don't I we? just don't know what to call it. I just said, I, I like to say Rogue. Rogue sounds cool. Rogue sounds cooler than ROG. <laughs> I know that it's Republic of Gamers. It's just, don't they always shorten it to ROG? Are we supposed to just say the ROG phone? That's yeah, fine. I guess so. I can switch ROG. to calling it just the ROG phone. I kind of like we can do that. ROG now, though. Yeah, ROG. ROG no ROG. It's awesome. <laughs> All right, talk about this phone. Because this phone, like, this is not a phone that's built for me. Uh, while I do a little gaming on the side, like the phone gaming thing, this is not for me. I like simple, plain Pixel phones. <laughs> you know that. Uh, I, I mobile game, and this phone isn't made for me either. <laughs> 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 it's got a... Uh, you know, it actually sounds kind of dope. I'll admit it's got a six inch 1080p display. It is AMOLED, an 18 by nine panel uh, with a refresh rate of up to 90 hertz. So not quite the 120 we saw with the Razer phone, but 90 hertz better than the standard kind of 60 we see on every other phone. So the uh, Snapdragon 845 processor clocked at 2.96 gigahertz. So that should be pretty good for playing your little your uh, Tweety Birds and all this other stuff. Uh, it's got a gaming optimized Adreno 630 GPU, 8 gigs of RAM, a 4,000 milliamp hour battery, dual front facing speakers, plus a 3D vapor chamber cooling system diet. I don't even get it. So apparently this chamber system, this vapor cooling chamber system is supposed to keep your device's internals cool, which will allow for that maximum refresh rate going on with the display and your GPU not exploding uh, with all the hertz and the, the, the gigawatts going on. It's going to be intense. And uh, they even have a, a, a adapt a aero active cooler fan. Uh, for additional cooling capabilities that you can attach to the device. So if you're in like a super intense gaming session, 
You're going to keep your phone even cooler in the hottest of battles. And in my post, I said, you know what? This is where I'm going to like add a little bit of snark because this is dumb. But you know what? No way, man. This it sounds kind of awesome. Unfortunately, it's not coming until Q3 later this year. I reached out to Asus. They couldn't give me anything more than that. And they couldn't give me a price um, or availability. Yeah, this is not the phone I expect to see uh, da, 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 on carriers. But I guess you never yeah, know. I mean, if the Verizon as a partner in recent years, but I don't know. If yeah. If the red hydrogen be. one is coming to That's carriers, true. then why not the That's ROG true. phone? <laughs> That's true. I mean, it looks like if, if you want to get serious about mobile gaming, like it, I think it's cool that they made something like this and tried to crank it up and they have like the cooling system attachment. Does it have like two USB C ports or something like that too? Like, well, it has a docking mechanism on the yeah. side, so they will have like a dedicated dock that people can use and plug it up to, you know, whatever their PC is. I guess if they want this to be their desktop PC with chamber cooling, they can do that. It sounds awesome. I'm sure but, it's great. I mean, kind of like the Razer phone. You know, I didn't really think the Razer phone was going to, I guess it feels like the niche, right? And maybe yeah. this will do that too. Um I can appreciate that mobile gaming is being taken seriously. I've been taking it seriously since day one. Yeah, I mean, you haven't uh, been taking it seriously. You play some Star Wars, probably the same game still to this day. <laughs> Every day, man. Just think if you had a ROG phone, an ROG phone, a Republic of Gamers phone. With yeah, if I had one of those. A cooling system. With a, a massive 4,000 milliamp hour battery. I mean, this phone... Sh- people should be excited about this phone yeah it looks kind of corny because it's <laughs> it does look kind of corny yeah because it's you know it's a rog phone and it's got yeah. the asus's little like demon eye thing going on uh yeah. and it's got some other interesting curves and stuff but you know what screw it it, it looks cool it looks cool it, it looks like the phone you would design when you were like six years old in your bedroom and be like oh, i want it to be like futuristic and look cool so no hate no hate for me i don't i don't hate anything i love it all so i'm ready right, uh final topic zte i'll try to keep this short zte is apparently back where uh uh the uh u.s government uh part of it has decided that they're okay and uh they can just pay a fine and they will come back after uh illegally selling stuff to iran and north korea and then lying about some stuff related to that and getting banned basically for a long time from uh, purchasing u.s uh components and uh basically put them out of business but now they're coming back it's political. Really want to to dive clarify. Deep. Yeah. Oh, sorry. I was just because I don't, I don't really want to dive too deeply in there, but just so you know what's going on. No, there, everyone. The, yeah. Trump, he, he, he's over here. Don't wake him up, please. <laughs> I'm sorry. Start well, going at least last, last show was like elbow was in. <laughs> yeah. Just kind of, <laughs> yeah. Just to clarify to Juan, I don't hate Juan. <laughs> I just hate his opinion on the black, but, but damn it. I will fight to the death for his right to say it. Again, I mean, everyone, you know, it's different strokes for different folks. We all dance to the beat of a different drum, etc. It's no big deal. Don't take it too seriously, guys. Just phones. But yeah, we're Blackberry, just talking, we're just talking trash about Blackberry phones. We're not talking trash about Juan. Exactly. It's Blackberry that sucks. Yeah, it's, it's Blackberry. Who owns Blackberry <laughs> now? It's some company that doesn't ever issue updates to their phones, right? Is the key one running Oreo yet? I'm just curious. Sorry? Is the key one running Oreo yet? You're asking the wrong guy. Sorry. <laughs> I'm, I'm Googling. Nope. <laughs> Stop. All right. Anyways. Yeah. No, no, and we, it's like, we weren't saying anything about one. We were, we were just trashing on Blackberry because it's kind of fun. Anyway. It says I hate that guy. We didn't say that we hate one. But I, I said I hate that guy, but what I meant is like, you know, I hate that opinion. Anyway. Now I'm starting to hate him <laughs> because he's giving me a hard time about what I said. Oh, I guess I missed that. Well, we, we really don't hate you, buddy. We actually I think appreciate he knows. that you're tuning I, into the show. Yeah. Yeah. I, I hope he knows that. All right. On a, such a happy note, should we do trivia? Should we do trivia? No trivia. <laughs> We're just canceling trivia now. <laughs> no, let's do it. I love trivia. We got uh, five questions. And again, we do have toast. Um, sponsoring this show, so we will have 
So how this is going to work is basically uh, for each of our winners, uh, we will read out some questions. First person to get it right in the comment section with the answer uh, will win. I will put my email address in the comment section. You will email me and tell me what phone you have. And if Toast makes a cover for that phone, we'll get you to cover for that phone. If you if you have a phone that they don't support, uh, we could do a cover for something else, uh, something that they make. So we're just that's the way it's going to going to go down. And also, real quickly, they do have uh, Pixel covers, and their Pixel covers are actually pretty cool because they have the two tone sort of shading right going on. So you can have the uh, let's say you can have the white portion kind of covered up in a walnut. And then this cover, um, this portion, the two-tone, you could have in a, in a bamboo or some other type of shade. So the Pixel 2 covers are very cool. So keep that in mind. If you own a Pixel 2 XL, they do make covers for it. And uh, they make covers for a whole lot of phones. They so make an we're going to see. Cover. <laughs> yeah. So we're going to see how this plays. I'm ready when you are, man. Is everyone else ready? Like, refresh your feed down low your latency or whatever <laughs> there's like a we turned the a delay on a little bit this show because uh last one would seem too instant now it's like it <laughs> seems really delayed have you noticed that there might be like a 30 second delay we would be we'd be waiting for those answers to come in we might have to switch it back next next show to Pick that last delay. <laughs> yeah down down low your latency not download come on guy Drop i know grammar low. 144p squad that's right grammar i do or audio only squad <laughs> audio only squad is probably the winning squad <laughs> all right anyway on. should we do this yeah let's do it let's start it off with question number one please question number one going up now so this one should be pretty easy <laughs> Asus rog phone launches later <laughs> this year but what does rog stand for Oh, uh, what just does say this about 800 times a billion no. times? <laughs> what does ROG stand for? Oh, there wasn't that big of a delay. No, that's not bad. I'm seeing Eric Ortiz with the first uh, correct answer. I also have Eric Ortiz with the correct answer. I think Eric's won every week. Eric's killing it, dude. Eric's got that crazy internet. Yeah, he does. And so the correct answer would be, of course, Republic of Gamers. Congratulations, Eric Ortiz. Yeah. God, you're fast. Gamers. Soccer burns in there. I mean, everyone was fast, and thankfully, everyone fastball. got it right. Uh, I mean, <laughs> if you would have got this wrong. Rogue. It's rogue. <laughs> it's rogue. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Awesome. Eric, you, Eric okay. you didn't miss last week. We didn't do a show last week. That's true. Good point. Uh-oh. They're saying Eric didn't spell it right. And this, you know what? That's true. He didn't. He this didn't, but I'm not going to, you know speed matters and we get it. it's republic of game it's no big deal i'm going to accept it i feel like so we did a show where somebody spelled something wrong and we hammered them but it was like different maybe no we we do not care about spelling like yeah. if they've got kind of like jeopardy like like if you phonetically you pronounce it wrong, wrong. Oh. no no if you phonetically pronounce it wrong then it's wrong but if you pronounce it where the pronunciation doesn't matter it's okay here i don't care about spelling come on let's right, not well, we should we need to establish like going forward if you leave a letter out it's ridiculous oh it, it's a typo <laughs> anyway yeah. all right oh, no trivia yeah. we're done here <laughs> all right let's go with question number two please What's showing question number all right question number two is up what processor is Google's upcoming Bonito mid-range Pixel device reported to have? Again, what processor is Google's upcoming Bonito mid-range Pixel device reported to have? And I see David Gotelli with the correct answer of the Snapdragon 710. Is that who you are seeing as well? Seeing that as well. Oh, congratulations, David, with the correct answer of Snapdragon 710. Correct. Fantastic. I'll get that added there. Perfect. All right. No drama this time. Oh, thank you for spelling 710 right. <laughs> <laughs> See, like on a question like this, if it was it's, it actually exact, matters this a little would, bit more. Yeah, if you wrote exactly. 701, that probably wouldn't have been correct. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Dang. 
Okay, you ready for question number three? <laughs> I'm ready. Question number three going up now. Oh, thank goodness. What year did Samsung switch to using Tizen for its wearable devices? Again, what year did Samsung switch to using Tizen for its wearable devices? You might have to Google that one, folks. Brett Wright with the correct answer of 2013 in the chat, correct? Correct. That's what I got. Brett, 2013. 2013 with the Gear Watch. Was it the Gear S something? I don't even know. Gear Gear something. It was the nipple cam. The nipple cam guy. <laughs> so congratulations, Brett Wright. Correct right, answer. I'm just curious. Like, are my slides going up way late? Like, is everyone hearing this before they're seeing it? Because my feed looks slow in YouTube, but everyone seems to be. No one's complaining that they're slow. Can't tell. Just, We're gonna get rid of this delay next week because I can't handle it. It's, it's yeah, playing, it's playing with my mind. Rough. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. Anyway. All right. Do you want to put the slide in now and then I'll say, or do you just want me no, to keep No, I think going? it's fine. I yeah. See, everyone says it's immediate, so. It's just okay. my, it's just the, the feed you and I are seeing is delayed. Good. All right. Let's go with question number four then, please. Question number four mind. going up now. What LG phone did AT&T release this year instead of the G7 Thin Q? What phone did AT&T release this year instead of the G7 Thin Q? I got Jason Green now. with the correct answer. Yeah, I'm seeing Jason Green with the correct answer of the V35. We would have also accepted 35 Thin Q, but that's quite all right. We don't use. Did anyone drop a Thin Q on there? Oh, we well, got one, one Thin one Q. Person. <laughs> we got one. It doesn't matter. I mean, come on. Yeah. We're not. Yeah. Jason Green, congratulations with the V35. The V35. Can you believe what it? What a weird I thing. G7 is the, supposed the, to be the phone of LG I'm, for the year. And, and the V40 like, is going to yeah, we'll come. This. Like. Is, I feel yeah, bad. is there going to be a V40 now? I have no God, idea. I hope so. Like anyone who buys a V35, I kind well, of so feel bad. So then ETD is going to pass on the V40, right? It's it's the weirdest they, thing. Maybe no V40, I guess. Who knows? Yeah. Although that would be real bad. <laughs> All right. All right. Here's another question. Final question. Are you question ready number for five going? Question number five. No. <laughs> How much will the BlackBerry Key Two cost? I hope Juan gets this right. <laughs> How much would the BlackBerry Key 2 cost? <laughs> David much. already won, so we got to go with Tyler Velinga. Correct? Yeah. Correct yeah, answer of 650. Saying. Yeah, so we would, just to clarify everyone, I will. I will accept 649 or 650. 649.99 is the 650 in my world. So. Congratulations to Tyler, Melinga, David. Of of course, you already won, so can't be giving can't him two prizes. Can only win once, so yeah, Tyler. Tyler Melinga, congratulations. You got all so, the winners. Yeah, I see Toast is in the chat. Toast in the chat. Toast has been a hands-on sponsor. I can dig it. That's very cool. Okay, I mean that that makes my life easy because they're they're putting the winners out there for me to see twice and stuff. Oh, I'm loving it. So what I'm going to do is to everyone who won, which would be Tyler, Jason, Green. We also have Brett Wright, again, Eric Ortiz, and David Gotelli. That's right. All right. So we got all of those five people. Please email me. I'm putting my email in the chat and then we will work out exactly what phone you've got and we will get out your legit sweet toast made real wood cover. There you go. Email has been posted. Email and in here there. we go. Give Tim a shout out. Work yeah, with, we'll and I believe Brett Wright part. is the one who has been having troubles with the emails because he won I think a couple of weeks ago and he like <laughs> he didn't email me until yeah. Later, yeah, he said yeah, I got but, you this time too. <laughs> okay, <laughs> please, funny. yes, make sure the email goes out. And yeah, oh, well, <laughs> congratulations to those five people, and thank you again to Toast um, for being a fantastic sponsor and um, providing these prizes for our winners. I know they greatly appreciate it. We greatly appreciate it. Um, it's always fun to be able to do stuff like this. So, and of course, 
thanks everyone for joining us and playing with us and letting me just rant and hate notches. Letting me defend <laughs> my notch comments. <laughs> exactly. Fiery, fiery show today. Rog. It was a good one. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, thanks for joining us, everyone. This was, uh, you don't have anything else, do you? Anything else you uh, no. I hope everyone has a fantastic weekend. Stay safe. Stay sober. <laughs> and uh, treat each other with respect. Yep. Joy Live Show episode 175. We will uh, we'll probably be back next week. Uh, thanks for joining us. Peace. Peace.